In this video, we'll talk about the laws or principles of inheritance. And these laws are based on the research that was done by Mendel. And that's why these laws are also known as Mendel's laws of inheritance. The first law is the law of dominance. The law says that if we start with pure line in the first generation or in F1, the character or trait which is expressed is the dominant trait. To understand this law, let us take one simple example. Suppose we start with a pure line that is pure tall, homozygous tall, crossed with pure short or homozygous recessive or homozygous dwarf. This is the parent generation and we are starting with pure line. In Mendel's laws or Mendel's inheritance, we always start with pure line. The gametes produced by this uh, plant would be with capital T or dominant allele, whereas with this plant it would be with recessive allele. And when we plot a punit square to see the offsprings or genotype of the offsprings in the next generation, we write the gametes produced by this plant on this side and the gametes produced by the pure homozygous recessive on the other side. And if this gamete is fertilized by the male gamete which we have put on this side, the offspring's genotype is going to be heterozygous in all four. But phenotypically, Due to presence of a dominant gene, all of them are going to be tall. So if we write the phenotype ratio, phenotype ratio, it's going to be 4 is to 0. 4 are going to be tall and none of them is short. And if we talk of genotype, that is the ratio based on the genotype, the ratio is going to be again 4 is to 0. All four are heterozygous tall. So they are heterozygous tall. So when the law says starting with a pure line in F1, the trait which expresses itself is the dominant. And here the dominant trait is tall. So this is law of dominance. The second law is law of segregation. Second law is law of segregation. Segregation means separation. Now when we say law of segregation, we need to understand what exactly this law means. It says that out of the two alleles, one goes on each gamete or in other words we can say during gamete formation, the two alleles of the gene get segregated or separated. If the parent is homozygous tall, then these two will get separated during meiosis or gamete formation. We know in meiosis, which is reductional division, half number of chromosomes would get into the gamete. So if we are starting with these two, one gamete would get this, another gamete would get this. If the parent is heterozygous, then one gamete would get the dominant allele and the other gamete would get the recessive allele. This parent, or this type of organism is termed as homozygous and because both the alleles are dominant we call it homozygous dominant. This individual is heterozygous because it has one allele as dominant and other allele as recessive. So this can be termed as pure also and this is heterozygous. In case of a pure of, uh, individual the gametes would have the same type of uh, dominant or recessive allele. Here, one gamete has dominant, other gamete has recessive. But if we talk about only the gamete, this gamete is pure for that particular allele. Here it was not pure because one, or, one was of dominant type, other one was of recessive type. In this gamete, there is only one allele 
and that is dominant. In this gamete, there is only one allele that is recessive. So, these gametes are pure for that particular allele and that is why law of segregation is also known as law of purity of gametes. Reason being, the gamete is having only one of the allele. So, there is no heterozygous condition there. So, law of segregation says that the gametes would get one allele out of two or the two alleles of one gene get segregated or separated during gamete formation. And the reason for giving this law another name is that one gamete has only one allele of that gene so it is pure for that. Now the third law can be understood if we understand dihybrid cross. In case of monohybrid crosses, we were able to understand law of dominance and law of segregation. To understand the third law that is law of independent assortment, independent assortment, we need to take a dihybrid cross. So here we have to remember that this law can be explained only by using a dihybrid cross whereas law of dominance and segregation can be explained using monohybrid as well as dihybrid cross. Here we will start with a dihybrid cross and then we will come to what exactly is meant by this independent assortment. As we are talking of Mendel's laws we will start with what was told by Mendel that is we start with pure line. So parent generation is going to be pure for two characters now. Say we are talking of tall and purple. So this is homozygous tall, homozygous purple. Pure for tallness and pure for purple. It is crossed with a pure short and white. That means homozygous for short or dwarf and white. If this is the parent generation in F1 or let us talk about the gamete formation first. In this, the gametes would have one of these and one of these. So one T and P. But here, because we, uh, we have started with homozygous tall and purple, it is going to be capital T and capital P. And there are four gametes which would be produced here. Why four gametes? The reason is that this T can go with this P, this T can also go with this P or same is applicable with the other T. So there are four possible ways in which these T and P alleles can go together. And this is what is exactly the independent assortment but we will be able to understand it when we come to the F2. So gametes are going to be TP, four gametes. And in case of the recessive parent, all four gametes are going to be with recessive, that is recessive for tallness is for short and white. So four and four gametes. Now if we plot punit square, we will have to write four gametes produced by one parent on one side and four gametes produced by the other gam by parent on the other side. If we write capital TP, lowercase TP here, then the offsprings which would be produced would have capital T from here and lowercase T from here, capital P from here and lowercase P from here. So they are going to be heterozygous for tallness and purple. All 16 offsprings are going to be heterozygous tall and heterozygous purple. Law of dominance can be explained here also. In F1, the trait which expresses itself is dominant, that is tall and purple. And all 16 offsprings are 
showing this dominant ring. So the law of dominance told us or says that if we start with pure line in F1, it is only the dominant trait which expresses itself. So here we can explain the law of dominance also. Now, if we go for selfing of F1, selfing as we had already discussed, selfing means when the offsprings of the same generation are crossed, then it is known as selfing. So if we perform selfing of the members of F1, we will get the next generation that is F2. So let us talk about F2 now so that we can understand this uh, law of independent assortment again in a slightly better manner. Heterozygous. These were the offsprings of F1. Now here we are using them as parent for the next generation. Now what type of gametes would be formed? Capital T can assort itself or go with capital P. Capital T can also go with lowercase p independent of what is the other p like. Lowercase t can go with capital P and lowercase t can go with lowercase p. That means a dominant allele can go with a dominant allele of the other gene as well as the recessive allele of the other gene. So independent of the other alleles, these uh, previous alleles can go with any of those. Independently, irrespective of whether the other P is capital or lowercase or dominant or recessive, they can go with any of those. Now, again, when we say independent, this is one gene, two alleles. One allele is dominant that is represented by capital T. It can independently assort itself with capital P, we get this gamut or lowercase p, we get this gamut. And why we are saying independently? Because it is not dependent on what is on the side of it. Whether it is lowercase t or capital or dominant t. So this is law of independent assortment and to understand this we need to take a dihybrid cross so three laws dominance law of dominance law of segregation can be explained using both monohybrid as well as dihybrid crosses but law of independent assortment can be explained only by using a dihybrid cross because then it is clear to explain that the allele of one gene can independently assort with any of the allele of the other gene. So, three laws of Mendel's. Now, we will talk about some crosses.